locate its military leadership structure in the Arctic. An article in the, Swed the Swedish Kings of Cyber War was published in the New York, New York Review of Books, January 19, 2017, so it's pretty new. I'll go to another subject now. It was written by Hugh Eakin. I quote here a part of this article. On April 24th, 2013, just weeks before Edward Snowden leaked about the NSA mass surveillance, the head of NSA, General Keith Alexander, welcomed a group of Swedish intelligence officials to a secret meeting at NSA Fort Meade, Maryland. In the delegation were Ingvar Åkesson, director of Sweden's National Defense Radio Establishment, known as FRA, and five members of Åkesson's staff. The aim was to discuss Sweden's growing importance to NSA. In a 2008 law, the FRA had been given expansive powers by the Swedish government to vacuum up all communications traveling over fiber optic networks into and out of Sweden, including emails, uh, text messages, and telephone calls. This was of great interest to the NSA, not least because a large part of Russian communications traveled through Sweden. In 2011, the, Sweden, the Swedes began sharing their surveillance data with the NSA, which meant a unique collection of high-priority Russian targets, such as leadership, internal politics, and energy. NSA officials viewed it as an ideal collaborator on its hacking and cyber warfare project called Quantum. One of the programs was an ambitious operation called Winterlight, which aimed at secretly hacking into high-value foreign computers and computer networks to obtain not only communications data, but also any information stored on the hard drives or servers in question. Targets were administration, administrators of foreign computer networks, government ministers, oil, defense, and other major corporate corporations. Similar quantum operations had targeted OPEC headquarters in Vienna, as well as Belgaco, a Belgian telecom company, whose clients include the European Commission and the European Parliament. According to NSA documents, Winterlight was using a complex attack strategy to secretly implant a malware program on the targeted computers or networks. What can they do? They can map out digital footprints of chosen workers, identifying in the internet protocol addresses of work and personal computers as well as Skype, Skype. Um, no, I, I missed the page. Where are you? Where am I now? I oh, uh, e ah, there. Gmail, Facebook, and LinkedIn. They then they set up rogue pages to impersonate, for example, an employee, an employee's legitimate LinkedIn profile page. NSA officials describe their Swedish counterparts as extremely competent, technically innovative, innovative, and trusted. Sweden is now a more reliable survival. Sweden, Sweden is now 
a more reliable, sir, I'm quoting directly from the book now, so I can't hardly read. I take it again. Sweden is now a more reliable surveillance ally, ally than Great Britain. <laughs> than Great Britain. Sweden's advanced internet spying appear, app apparatus, oh my god, uh, app apparatus has been noted by Snowden. The difference between the NSA and the Swedish FRA is not one of technology, but rather of funding and manpower. Mark Klanberg, a Swedish legal scholar who has written about the FRA law said, at the top you have the NSA and below the GH GCHQ, and it's written there, and below that, below that you have du -du -du Sweden. When Swedish media revealed the Snowden documents showing Sweden's extensive collaboration with the NSA to spy on internet users and even hack into their computers, the response was muted. No parliamentary hearing was held. And I can say, living in Sweden, you didn't hear anything about that Snowden pointed out that Sweden was one of the countries that was third on the list on spying. It was muted. No newspaper, not even the leftists, disclosed this fact. Though official and neutral, Sweden has in fact built close ties to both NATO and the US security establishment in the early 1940 and was deeply involved in Cold War spying, op spying operations. The Swedish FRA used the Swedish embassy in Helsinki, capital of Finland, to intercept Soviet military and diplomatic communications using equipment provided by NSA and working for the CIA. Sweden broke diplomatic codes of numerous countries and helped the US to receive them. The author of this article puts in the end a question. Are advanced democracies any different than their counterparts in, author in authoritarian countries like Ch China? The answer is no. So that was what I had to say. I have a lot of other things to say, uh, but I think I mixed the whole speech up as usual. But you can make it, you can applause now. <laughs> Well, of course, we've been losing time all um, morning, and this um, panel is scheduled to end at four. And Bruce Gagnon suggested to me that we not have questions and discussion because we don't have time if we're going to uh, get the rest of the schedule done. Uh, these folks have come a long way in what dresses and everything for the conference. So I hope um, uh, if you have questions or discussion, everybody seeks them out and, and um, asks those questions. Uh, thank you for your attention.